This is David Levin for Pop Goes the Culture and for Wise Brother Media. And today I am really excited to be talking to Mrs. Garrett herself from the Facts of Life and Different Strokes and many, many other things. Charlotte Ray, who is here because she has just written a book called The Facts of My Life. Charlotte, thanks for talking to me today. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> it's nice to speak to you, David. You too, Charlotte. We, uh, you know... <laughs> For the people who've grown up with you and who've watched you on TV and who've, uh, who've who've enjoyed your work so much, and now you've written a book that sort of goes inside and talks about your experiences working and also in your life. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, about the facts of my life and what motivated you to write the book? Well, my son, Larry is a writer and a teacher, and he um, said to me one day, Ma, I think it's about time you uh, wrote your memoirs. And I said, well, I'm not a writer, but if I can talk to you and, uh, and you'll write it, that'll be fine. Well, it was a wonderful idea we both became, it was a wonderful experience for the two of us to do this together. And I, I didn't think about it much, but then it dawned on me that I would let it all hang out. <laughs> I would tell the story of my life, and I wouldn't say anything, no dirt about other people. I'm not interested in that. Right. In passing judgment and criticizing other people. Just tell people what I went through in my life and then tell them about all the wonderful people I work with and all the great, fun things we, we experienced together. And so I did, and I'm very proud of it. And, and I'd, I talked to him about something that he knew, too, that our older son uh, was... Autistic. Mm. Now, that's something that in those days nobody knew what that meant. Right. As a matter of fact, when the, the doctor told me when he was about five years old that he was autistic, I thought he said artistic because I'd never heard that other word, right. autistic. And I said, thank God, because I thought, well, that's the only thing that's wrong with him with his behavior, that he's, he's, he's uh, very artistic, which is very wonderful. No, 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 he explained to me what it was. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and, that, that, and must there, have been, that must have been uh, crushing. I know that's part of what you're talking about in, in the book, yes? Yes, it, I mean, it was, it was a very big challenge, and I do think that we, we made his life as happy and 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 as and, 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 and as good as it could be, right? And um, and and then came alcoholism, and uh, and through Alcoholics Anonymous, I was able to uh, one day at a time. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm I've been sober for forty two years, and then. Um, after 25 years of marriage, my my husband told me he liked an open marriage because he was bi. Uh, what do you call it? Bisexual. Yeah. Bisexual, and um, so uh, that was a hard thing to uh, uh, accept and understand. And and then I did and. We became good friends, and I asked for a divorce, and he's been a wonderful father, and and I moved on, and through all of this, um, went back to the career and all stuff, and 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 then that's all the heavy duty stuff, <laughs> and the rest is jolly, the fun and stuff, fun, and. Full of love, and I think that it's a book that would be enjoyable, and you can get it on Amazon. <laughs> so, in other words, you took the good, you took the bad, 
you took them both, and there you had the facts of your life. Exactly. <laughs> Very well put. David, that was too, superb. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where yes. that came from. It just popped into my head. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> that was pretty pretty smart of you. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 really. No, you know, I had so much, so much fun and and jolly good times with not only uh, all these people that I worked with through the years, but with my family and with Andy as well as Larry and John and all my friends. Oh my God! You've worked with you've worked Please. with some amazing, amazing people. Some early, very early in their careers, like George Clooney. What was it like to work with um, George Clooney at such an early point in his career? Well, first of all, he was so cute and so adorable. You kind of you kind of had a crush on him, didn't you? Like everyone yeah, else. Yeah, I did have a crush on him, and I went to see him in a play. He was in a play um, in Hollywood in a theater, and I saw him, and he was so great. And I told him if he had a a good agent, or he got a good part that he could become a big, big star. He was such a good actor, and he became a big star. And I'm so proud of him because he's handled himself with such dignity yes. and grace. Yeah. And I think he's, you know, he seems to be a citizen of the world. He's con- He's concerned about the world, yeah. not just himself and his stardom. That, that's very commendable. That's Don't exceptional. Think? I, I think it's exceptional. And then Molly Ringwald, before she went on to her movie career, was a, was a regular the first season of Facts of Life, yeah. yes? Yes, and she sent me a uh, congratulations because I was on the home and family show, yeah. and they were honoring me for my 90th birthday. Wow. And she congratulated me and and sent me all of her love and uh, so did George Clooney they 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 got him to say a few words so at 90 so that was lovely at 90 years old you're kind of at the halfway point of your career i guess <laughs> halfway halfway and then you'll you know maybe in a few years you'll think about retiring or <laughs> or slowing oh. down no, I think with every new wrinkle, there's a new role. Waiting absolutely, for me. absolutely, there is. I was, I was mm-hmm. kind of, I was kind of kidding. Um, when, when, when you were working on the Facts of Life before that, th- that was actually a spinoff to to uh, Different Strokes, and you, th- th- it was very interesting. You talked about how you got the part on Different Strokes. Can you tell me about that? Well, yeah, it was very interesting. I mean, uh, Norman Lear had all these shows going, you know, um, on the family and, and Maud and, oh, so many. Um, and um, I had worked for him on the Colgate Comedy Hour in New York. Wow. And so they had me doing little guest shots on all his shows. And then one day I was doing something for another television show and another network. And um, I got a call from his casting lady, Murray, uh, Jane Murray, and she wanted me to um, come about uh, different strokes. It had already been sold, and they were just looking for the housekeeper. They right. And and um, I went in, and I thought I was going to audition for the part of the housekeeper. But no, they just asked me questions. What did you think the housekeeper would have to be like to take care of these three children, Mr. Drummond's daughter and the two boys from the housekeeper who died? Mm -hmm. And I told them I thought she'd have to be filled with a lot of love and affection and warmth, but also, um, you know, stand by uh, the things uh, that needed to be guarded against, you know, uh, needed to be, uh, what what is the word? Um, I forgot the word. The boundaries, um, making sure they're doing the right thing. Boundaries, that's right. 
and uh, and and so on and so on and so on. And the next thing I I, I get a call. They wanted me for the part. Amazing. I nearly fainted. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the right, amazing. clearly the right person. And then how did the how did the spinoff end up happening? Do you remember? Well, uh, well, um, I thought I would. I I thought I, I, I thought I lost the job. Uh, I was doing <laughs> different strokes, and I only had about twelve lines one day. And after the show was over. The producer was beckoning me, and I thought, oh, oh, they're going to fire me. And no, they said, um, Fred Silverman wants to um, boost up the network, NBC, and he wants to spin you off uh, with a new series called um, The Facts of Life, and uh, they need a, a history of Mrs. Garrett. And so you're going to have to get together with the writers and give them a little uh, history of Mrs. Garrett. <laughs> and I nearly fainted. I couldn't believe that this was happening. And to this day, it, 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 isn't that amazing? That's how life, crazy. Life happens. That's mm-hmm. really amazing. And you and and you're still, you know, the first year there were a lot more girls, and then they sort of pared it down to the four. Yeah who became the, the, the core of the show, and you're still in touch with them, aren't you? You're still friends with them. Oh, I'm friends with the girls who are on my show. Uh, yes, uh, I'm very close to Nancy McKeon. Nancy, I was up at her house uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Texas, Austin. They have a ranch, mm-hmm. and I, I was up there. I had a jammy party. I slept overnight. <laughs> we had a wonderful time. And then they came here to my house last week for lunch. And then the next morning, they came over to kiss me goodbye and give me a hug before they went on to San Diego to visit friends. And uh, we're in touch constantly, Nancy and I. And I love Lisa and and Kim. They're they have children and they're good parents and they're and 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 uh, the other one the one i discovered uh, um what's her name mindy oh god mindy Cohn. mindy i discovered her and she's a very very talented woman who's always working she does a lot of voiceover work yeah yeah they're very very lovely lovely women and now it's woman to woman we talk like you know, equals because we're women and we tell each other everything, everything. I I recently had Bob McGrath on my show and he was on Sesame Street, Bob McGrath from Sesame Street. You did, you did Sesame Street. Oh, lovely man. Oh, what a lovely man. Yes. (laughs) Yes, How yes. Is he? he's he's great. Uh, they recently had let all the humans of Sesame Street go, and then after the outcry was so large, they brought all the people back. So I, th- oh, I heard well, he was I'm... just rehired. Oh, I'm glad they hired him back. I'm so glad. And you... uh, yes. Charlotte, it has been so nice talking to you today and to listening to your stories. And, and the book is called The Facts of My Life, and you can get it on Amazon. I want to be sure I get that in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Charlotte, do you have a social media presence at all? Are you on Twitter or, or anything like that or Facebook? No, I don't do any of that. I don't know why, but I, my life is so busy. Well, I, I don't, I don't do that. I mean, I'm, I, I know I'm, I'm part of the 21st century, but I, I just can't keep up with all of that. <laughs> your, your fans love you. It's very clear, and uh, I hope they'll all go out and get your book. And I am so excited to have spoken to you today. Uh, so thank you for joining me. David, you were wonderful. Thank you very much. I hope I did okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> you did fantastic. You okay. did fantastic.